everyone. So we're going to talk about how to find the domain of a function just by giving the equation. So what we need to understand is that what is domain? Domain is the set of all possible inputs. Okay, so we're going to write that down. Just we're going to keep referring to it. Domain is the set of all possible inputs. Okay? Now, when we write domain, we can either write it in set notation or we can write it in interval notation. Most of the time, you're going to see it in interval notation. So that's what we're going to stick with today. Maybe in class, we can do some practice with writing it in both ways. So I'm going to take a look at a function. Let's call it f of x equals the square root of x. Okay? Now let's think about that. When you take the square root of a number, what kind of a number do you have to take the square root of? That's right, you have to take the square root of positive numbers, right? Positive numbers have to go inside the radical, okay? It's not possible for you to take the square root of a negative number and get a real answer. There isn't a number that I can square and get a negative answer, right? Because every time you square something, you get a positive number. So when I'm trying to find the domain of this, this idea here is very, very important. So what we're saying is that everything inside the radical has to be positive, okay? It could be zero, right? You could take the square root of zero because the square root of zero is zero. So what we're saying here is that the inputs right, or the set of the domain, the inputs have to be greater than or equal to zero. That way, you're going to guarantee yourself a positive number. So when I write the domain of this function, I'm basically saying that it can be anything including zero and above. So from zero to infinity. All right, so let's take a look at another one. How about g of x equals the square root of x plus 2? Okay, notice that that x plus 2 is all inside that radical. Okay, so once again, we're going to use this concept that I can only take the square root of positive values here. Okay, so when I look at this x plus 2, I need that whole thing to be greater than or equal to 0 right? So let's think, what's the smallest value, the smallest x value that I could put in there, that I could input into that function, that's going to give me zero? Well, the smallest thing I could put in here would be negative two, right? Because negative two plus two is zero. I could also solve this inequality that I've written here and just say, okay, if I want to get x alone, then I'm just going to subtract 2 from both sides. So now I'm looking at a domain that is from negative 2 inclusive off to infinity. So when you're taking a look at square root functions, you really, really, really want the inputs to always be positive, okay? Or you want the value of what's inside of there to always be positive. Okay, let's take a look at a different example. f of x equals 1 over x. Okay, this is an interesting example as well because now I'm going to have an issue with dividing. Can I divide by anything that I want? Can I take any x value in the whole world and divide by that? Well, I can divide by negative numbers, definitely. I can obviously divide by positive numbers. I can definitely divide by fractions, decimals, all of that. But there is one value that you can never divide by. You are not allowed to divide by zero. Hopefully you learned that in algebra one. That's an undefined, right? You can never divide by zero. So that means that this input right here can really be anything except zero. It can be anything in the whole wide world except for the number zero. So when we, we write our domain, we're going to say that I could have anything from negative infinity to zero 
but I'm not going to include zero, right? I can have anything up to the value of zero, but not zero itself. And then I can have anything after zero, okay? So that's sort of my way of saying pretty much any number in the whole wide world except for zero. Any number up to zero, not including zero, and any number after zero, not including zero. All right, so let's take a look at a different one again here. Let's say that I have g of x equals 1 over x minus 4. So again, this denominator here, it cannot equal 0. I have to find the x value that's going to cause that to be 0 because that's something that I can't have. So x minus 4 can't equal 0. Well, if this little equation here, this x minus 4 can't equal 0, well, that just means that x can't equal 4. Because if I plug 4 in there, 4 minus 4 is 0. So in this case, our domain, once again, can be anything in the entire world except for the number 4. Okay? So these are very specific types of examples that you're going to see. There's also going to be lots of other ones you're going to see in your classwork. So when you're working on your classwork, really try and think about what values are you allowed to input into that function. All right, good luck, everyone.